to the zone here. Good evening, everybody. Hello. If you don't mind, I thought I would just say a few words about Schumann and my thoughts about these wonderful four symphonies, especially on the occasion of the 200th anniversary of his wife Clara's birth in 1819. I adore these four symphonies from right in the middle of the 19th century, written between 1841 and 1851, at the heart of German Romanticism. They're melodic, they're full of love, full of humour, full of warmth, wonderful tunes, remarkable orchestral sounds. Romanticism in the middle of the 19th century. Haydn and Mozart had written beautiful, classical, correct music, often for masters. Beethoven had gone pretty mad. He was revolutionary at the time of revolution, and he introduced much more drama, much more argument, and excitement in a way. All the young German composers after Beethoven turned away from this, this giant madman, as they thought he was. So Weber, Mendelssohn, Schumann, and of course Schubert, who knew, knew Beethoven, uh, they all turned away to something else. It was Schubert who showed the way. With his great C major symphony, he showed that you could write a big piece without any argument at all, without any development, without any, any daring drama. He told a story. And of course it was Robert Schumann who discovered that symphony. He went to Vienna and talked to Schubert's brother and said, have you got any other music? By, by Schubert, oh, we've got some in an old trunk here. And out he got the, 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 the great C major symphony, which changed everything. So when Mendelssohn conducted it in Leipzig, Robert Schumann heard it and he realized he could write symphonies. He wanted to write symphonies like that, with tunes, with stories. And that became possible. That was a new way to write. Weber wrote these beautiful overtures and operas, what we call the early romantic style. Mendelssohn wrote symphonies with names, the Italian, the Scottish, the Reformation, and Schumann followed suit. Schumann also lived in Leipzig in New Mendelssohn. Uh, his, his wife came from Leipzig, he'd been studying with his wife's father, Wieck, and, and he immediately followed suit with a spring symphony, with a Rhenish symphony, and the two others, in fact, don't have names attached to them, but they are deeply uh, uh, pro programmatic. One of them, as you, as you will discover later, is a, it's a, a, Robert, it's a Robert symphony. It's about Robert, the one we're going to play later this evening. And the other one is a Clara symphony, which we'll play tomorrow. So this was, this was a wonderful uh, evocation of feeling, of storytelling, of affection. And I find that very, very attractive. By the end, of, during the second half of the 19th century, these symphonies were very popular. But when Brahms came along and Wagner came along, they kind of drowned out Schumann. They were, they were bigger, they were stronger, they were more powerful, and people thought Schumann was a little bit feeble. I don't. Um, I think he's absolutely marvellous at his own man. Uh, it, when I was young, <coughs> in, the, in, in the last century, um, it, the Schumann symphonies were hardly played at all, because they, we were still in the thrall of Brahms and Wagner. But there was another reason why people didn't play them, 
it didn't seem to work with a big orchestra, with a huge string section and a small wind section. And uh, I remember people trying and not really succeeding. What you need, ideally, is a small orchestra, exactly this size. This is almost exactly the size of the orchestra that Mendelssohn had in Leipzig, in which Schumann heard that Mendelssohn could act many times in the, in the first Gewandhaus in Leipzig. It works fine with this sort of size. It also works fine with, uh, if you follow the, the practice of the time, we call it the four S's, size, seating, sound, and style, or shape. So the size we have here, this is the right size. The seating is also right with the violins, I'm sure you're used to it here, but uh, until quite recently, people didn't sing the sit like this at all. First violin, second violin, echoing. Horns, and get trumpets, echoing. Basses, right in the middle. That's how Mendelssohn and Schumann expected to hear their music. So that's sound, size, and seating. Sound, of course, refers to the way in which they, when they developed the sound in an orchestra. In those days, as you, I'm sure, are well aware, they didn't use all this funny vibrato stuff, this funny wobbling. <laughs> so you won't hear that either. Um, and then, uh, style or shape, you can't just play the notes, you have to find the right shapes. So that we also try to do. I hope you'll like it. Um, there's one other thing which, of course, is typical. We spend a lot of time trying to play the music right here. But there's one thing you could do if you want to, if you want to know how music sounded in those days. And the Gewandhaus, the first Gewandhaus, was just about the size of this room, by the way. Just about this number of people. There's only one other thing you could do, which they always did. They would have found, if they heard, those people had heard a modern performance, they would have been very puzzled by one thing the silence between the movements. Because, of course, they clapped every movement all through the 19th century and right up till about 1910, 1915. It was normal to, 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 that was very nice music, thank you very much, and to clap. So, if you feel like it, you could. <laughs> if, you're, if you're really embarrassed, you could sit on your hands <laughs> or tell the person next to you to shut up, you know, but it's what they did. You'll see any of you who managed to, managed to hear the fourth symphony tomorrow, that in that one he didn't want any applause, but I'll talk about that tomorrow. If you can, if you can beg or, or buy a seat for tomorrow's concert. Um, because we'll play all four, of course. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, the first symphony was extraordinary. The years before he married Clara, he wrote tons of piano music, wonderful, wonderful piano music. When he married Clara in 1840, he wrote, during the year 1840 to 41, he wrote 148 songs. He was, yes, manic depressive. When he wasn't depressive, he was very manic. And this comes out in a lot of his music, especially the next symphony we're going to play. So he went mad writing songs. That's more than two a week. Um, but when he, after one year of marriage, he wanted to celebrate their marriage with, with the symphony, and his, his wife Clara uh, really strongly persuaded him to, to, to try to try orchestral music, which he hadn't, he'd hardly done at all. Although one of the first orchestral things he ever did was to, to write the orchestra parts of Clara's own piano concerto, which she wrote when she was 14. Horrible little girl. Um, so, so she persuaded him. And so, with his usual manic attitude, he dashed off the first symphony. He sketched it through four days and nights. Couldn't stop. And that same year, he wrote two symphonies and one, one little chamber symphony for three, of three movements. All, all, that, all that for the first year when he was writing orchestral music. Extraordinary. So this is the Spring Symphony. The spring was in his heart. 
he just he wanted to celebrate a year of marriage their first child was on the way spring was in his heart out comes this pour, pouring of, of, of music and he had a poem in mind which set it off can I remember how it goes O Wende, Wende, deinen Lauf im Tale blüht der Frühling auf I'm sure you all know German very very well but I'll translate it into French for you well, <laughs> Swedish maybe no, no. I'll translate it into English Oh, t turn, turn, turn this way my dear uh, it, down in the valley spring is coming spring is blooming so spring was blooming for them and the first woman shows this arrival you hear that rhythm it's quite nice to hear that the second woman he called evening a spring evening very very beautiful um, the third woman she called merry playmates uh, very witty pl playful piece and the last moment was spring in full bloom but it, that meant that it was about to leave so that was a bit sad as well so these, those, those are the four movements and one, one wonderful thing he does in the symphony just before the end of each movement he gives you an extra bit of music an extra tune in each movement there's an extra thing that happens like a sort of reward for staying in a hotel, you know, rewards. Um, so look, look out for that, that's, that's going to be nice. Well, I expect you might like some music now, would you like some music? <laughs> <laughs> Would you have to have the interval? <laughs> <laughs>